everybody, it's Jeff, and we're going to continue with part 7 of the uh, Mini Art U.S. Army G7107 cargo truck. Having a lot of fun building this. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before we get started, um, I've only started the channel about three months ago, and right now we're at 97 subscribers. So if there's anybody out there that's watching this and really enjoys the content, just hit the subscribe bell if you would. It doesn't cost a dime, and it would really help me out. I'd love to get to 100, and of course way on beyond that too. Anyway, let's continue on with step 16. And we've got some parts here for the engine. Let me move this down to where you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, we've got the engine block. Let me get my uh, chassis here. I keep everything you know, in closed containers for safety and for keeping them from getting all dusty. So here's our engine block right here. We're not going to need the chassis right now. So we'll go ahead and set that back aside. And I'm going to get a little um, container here to keep this in. The point we're at in the instructions, we need to really start thinking about what we're going to do with paint. Um, everybody has a different idea about how to paint things. They're all perfectly good. You know, some people like to put everything together and then go back with little brushes and paint what they're doing. Great idea. You know, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, what I generally do is I put together what I can paint. Like the the engine and the bell housing will all be a light gray, pale gray. So I can put that all together and paint it. And then all these little components are black and silver. And I can paint those separately and then attach them to the engine and it it just to me it's just easier you know if you want to do it a different way you know every, everything's good we're, we're building models here it's not science okay so I've got the engine here and I've got all these parts cut out now let me grab the little tray for these make sure I'm got in the right one here okay, I spent a lot of time prepping for this so I'll show you what we're doing here Here's the starter, BF-10. Okay, I don't want to attach that now because that's going to be black. So what I'm going to do, I've got the part number still in here, so I know what it is so I can figure out where it goes. But I'm going to put that aside, and I'm not going to paint it yet. What I do is I actually have another container. I mark it with black and the paint over that's going to go in there okay going to save that for now we're not going to do any painting until we get a whole bunch of black parts it's just more efficient and to me it seems to make sense i you know would much rather paint 20 black parts at one time than paint one at a time and have to keep cleaning brushes and airbrushes and whatnot so here's uh bf4 that's our bell housing okay that right here BF5, so these will all go together. BF6, if I can get it out of there. There we go. Now, PE10, that's going to be painted black along with um, this little stand here. Now this, <clears throat> I haven't done anything with yet as far as getting it ready for paint, but I'm going to pin it, or I should say wire it, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So both these parts are going to be black, so I'm going to put those in the black container. So let's go ahead and get uh, these assembled. Let me go ahead and move my instructions over a little bit. And I'll bring this out because it's so much easier to hold things with my white tack. 
And we're going to go ahead and use the standard Tamiya Extra Thin, I think, for this. So we've got to do, this will go on the bottom. This is the bell housing. This will be the bottom of the bell housing. And it is keyed. There is a slight key there. The fact is, I'm going to put that a different way. So that's the way that goes together. So I'll mount it. this way to where where I got a glue is up okay and let me get my bigger tweezers here so I don't get my fingers too close to glue we'll just go around this I'll turn this over put it on just like so and it fell off, fell off of course Ha! It's going to be one of them days again, guys. I guess I can hold it far enough out. Keep my fingers out of the glue. Okay. You guys saw it fit just a minute ago. There it goes. I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to have to reapply glue now. Just the way it goes. Okay. There we go. It's not quite lined up. There we go. Okay, that's all good. I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to set, and then we'll glue uh, this part, which is the um, BF16. So let's let's give that a few seconds, and we'll continue on with 17. Step 17. I'll have to try and remember not to make these files too long because I don't want to have the same issue I had last time and the computer giving me a hard time about about uh, file sizes. So on step 17, I'll grab the parts here. This is the transmission. So we've got uh, BF33 is the main part of the transmission. Then we've got 20, BF26, BF27, and BF23 to add to them. And then this will all get painted steel color. So I'll put this all together, but then I'll leave it in one single container, and I'll put it with the parts that need to be painted steel. Here's this, and we'll put that on on there and then I want to make sure okay that uh, I'm facing the same direction as the drawing put that to the side first part is going to be BF 27 which will go on the top and with it painted pasted the same direction that'll sit on top just like so Okay, so we'll just do a drop of uh, quick setting on there. That'll have that. I'm going to have to get rid of these glasses. Can't see up close with glasses. Isn't that crazy? I see a lot better up close without them. Okay, there's that. Okay. Then we'll turn, we'll give it just a second, we'll turn it and put uh, BF26 on the end, which is this part here. This, this sets so fast. So we'll get our stuff going here. Put that on there. BF26 will go on, there's a, a little peg here. And there's a peg in the or a hole in the back, so we had to make sure that we put it on the correct direction, which would be just like that. If you guys can see it, so a little quick setting again. Make 
make sure we're nice and straight. Okay, there's that on. And move that aside. We have BF23, which will be on this side over here. That quick setting dries so fast that you better have your parts where you want them when you put it put the glue to it, or you're gonna have parts you're gonna have to pry off. Okay, BF23. It's right here, and that's going to be just a little side cover. And it looks to me like it's pretty much the same either way. There's a slight little depression there to hold it, so that should be just fine. Just a tiny, tiny little bit of the quick setting, and that should be good to go. Okay, this is going to be painted uh, steel colored, so I'll put that back in a container, and we're going to put that in the little little uh, tub here marked steel. Okay. So that gives me what color, and then I, from, from working on the model, I know that that's the transmission. I may have to wire that to be able to hold it, which I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. So let's go back to this. Okay, this goes there's, there's no uh, real key on the back, but they're on the front. It sits in, and there's this uh, bar here that sticks up. we got to make sure that is facing out. So we'll go ahead and put that on with the um, quick setting. Just take the touch. And this part, particular part here is what will attach it to the engine. It doesn't take very much. Okay, that should be good there. Now this part, it will be painted the gray just the same as the engine. So we can go ahead and assemble these and uh, put those in the box for painting. There's a slot here in the back that matches the bar here. Okay, so all we need to do is take this and flip it over and attach it, just like so. And that's our engine and, and bell housing. So I'll put a little uh, regular extra thin on here. And just hold it for a second. Okay, and there's a slot in the back of the bell housing which will uh, locate our transmission. But this is all going to be painted gray before we start adding any parts to it. So I'll put that in the tub and then I'll go over here to the box that is pale gray and that'll go in there. I'm not sure if anything else will be pale gray or not, but there's no point in painting. And then later on, if it comes up and says, oh, we need to paint something else pale gray. Okay, I'm going to call that step 16 and 17 finished for now. What I'm going to do on the instructions here, the parts that are going to be, that I still have to paint, I'm going to mark them with a P. So, P... P, P, and K, and P. So I need to get a couple more parts here out yet. Let's see if I've got them here. Let's see, BF14. Okay, here's what I'm talking about with wiring. The trans or the engine transmission combination are going to be. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite have 16 finished. The engine transmission is going to be a light gray. This is the coil and it's going to be black. Okay, if you can see that. 
try and keep everything on camera. There is an attachment point on the end here, but it's it's bigger than the coil is. So what I did, this is three mil wire. I have three mil and five mil. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of this stuff. I bought it on Amazon. And I use a three mil drill bit. And I just drill a little tiny hole in a place that's going to be inconspicuous. Okay. This is on the back side of the coil, so when it's glued on, you'll never see it. The attaching point was at the end where it's going to be pace, pacing straight up right into where you're right into where you're going to be uh, seeing the engine. So that is going to go to black. Here is the fuel pump. Okay, if you can see that. That's going to be silver. So once again on the back side away from where you're going to see it. The, the attaching point was, I think, on the top. So it was huge, and you were going to, you know, you'd have to touch it up anyway. So this is going to be silver, or actually aluminum colored. So this is going to go in the aluminum box. This is going to go in the black. This is the distributor. And it's going to be black. So that's going to go in the back, the black box. It also has the part number in here, so I know what it is, and I can figure out where it goes. So now we're going to call 16 finished for now. We'll go on, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera here just to get the file size down. We've been running about 17 minutes here, so it shouldn't be too big. So I will be right back. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back and ready to start step 18. Let me move my mouse aside. I just got this. I really like it. Uh, it's it's a Wi-Fi mouse. So you just plug a little adapter into the uh, side of your computer. You turn it on, and it works. It comes with batteries and everything. I got a keyboard from them, too. So I don't have a wire to drag all over my bench and break parts. It works real good. And it was inexpensive. It was like $20, $25 for a mouse and a keyboard. So can't complain about that. Okay, on to step 18. Here is the water pump. Okay, if I can get it out of there. BF9. This is going to need to be painted. The water pump itself will be an aluminum color. And the hose will be a rubber black. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the box with the aluminum. The mounting location, I'm afraid, is going to be at the top. So I may have to drill a small hole in the back or the bottom and wire it. I'll, I'll have to look and see. But that's going to go in the aluminum box for right now. This is the um, little fan that goes on the front of the, the generator. And I'll probably paint that. It says five, which I think is aluminum. Got to check my references. Well, it's steel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in with the uh, steel box. The attaching point is on the back side, so I can paint it, and then when I cut that off and glue it to the uh, generator, you'll never see it. So that'll go in the steel box. Next part is the generator. I know. Newer cars, there are alternators, but this is a generator. I'm sure this was a 6-volt system. Once again, the attaching point was on the back here. and was real big. So, I drilled a hole and put a little wire in it. And it'll be on the back side facing the engine block. It'll be, you know, right up against the engine like so. So, you'll never see the place where I put the wire. And then that, that uh, little fan that goes on there behind the uh, pulley will attach this end here and so you'll have a nice contrast in colors. So this is going to go in the black box. Uh, BF15 is the intake manifold. Okay. I want to paint that steel. I don't want that to be the same color as the engine block, so we're going to put that in the box with the steel. 
and that'll be painted. Here's the fan, fan belts. Uh, this will be painted, the pulleys will be various colors. Um, I will probably paint the, the pulleys either a steel or maybe the bottom pulley actually a, 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 a silver color or something, but the, be the, be the uh, belt itself will be black. So I'm probably gonna spray it black and then come in and just touch up the pulleys. So I'm gonna put this in the black container for right now. BF8, that's, this is the uh, timing chain cover, okay? This will be the same color as the engine, so let's go ahead and glue that on with our gray. It'll go on the front here. And it's keyed. It'll go on just like so. Let me put just a little bit of regular extra thin on there. Make sure we have it oriented the correct way. And that will be painted the, the gray, just like everything else. And I believe that's probably where the front of the uh, engine will mount to the chassis. Okay, so this goes back in the uh, gray container, or yeah, pale gray. Another part that will be painted, this is the inlet for the, I believe it's the, the inlet, it's for the uh, radiator. So this is a radiator hose on the top and then this is where your thermostat would sit here. So I'm going to paint the bottom part here aluminum and then the, bot, the top part we're going to paint with a brush just the, the rubber black. So I'm going to put that in the aluminum box for right now. And one more part. This is the uh, breather BF28 that goes on the top up here. This is going to be black. The attaching point was right on top. So if I'd have just left it, you know, cl I, I clipped it and left a little bit of the sprue on there just to make it easy for me to handle. But if I'd left that on and then painted it and cut that off, then I, the whole top of it I would have had to sand and paint again. So I wasn't able to actually put a wire right in the center and it's not important because that's so small. It's going to be at the bottom of the engine so you're not going to see it, but I put a small hole just right beside the, uh, you know, the, the locating pin and I'll just snip that off and it'll be in a location that won't be seen. So that's going to go in the black box. So, for right now, all this stuff is going to be in paint, uh, except for this. And this is, the uh, BF-8 is done. So this is all going to be painted. Okay, so we're going to move on to 19, which is going to be a little bit more of the same. And... Make sure I've got my parts in the right order. Okay. BF-16, I'm going to, this is the uh, intake manifold. So I want to paint that in a, um, no, excuse me, this is, let me double check. Okay, this is the intake manifold. The other manifold is a, is a aluminum color. Let me check and make sure I didn't mess up. Let's see here, steel. Here we go. Don't want to tell you guys wrong. This is the exhaust manifold, BF-15. So I want that to be painted a rust color. And the attaching point is where the exhaust pipe will connect. So I don't want to paint that aluminum. I want to paint that rust. So I've got a box over here marked rust. And we'll put that in there. This is the intake manifold, and I want to paint that steel. And the uh, 
wire is on the inside where it mounts to the engine. So, you know, when I'm all through painting it, I just clip the wire off and it'll be all good to go. So this will go in the steel box. This is going to be, there's a little spacer underneath the carburetor. I know, cars don't have carburetors anymore. That's BF24. But this one did. Okay, this is the carburetor. And the mounting point is on the top, right where the, um, or I should say where the sprue connector is, is where the air cleaner is going to mount. So I can go ahead and leave that alone. But this part will connect to this end of it, and then it'll all be painted aluminum. This is actually where the uh, vacuum lines and so forth were connected to. That was how they controlled the timing advance and everything before they came up with uh, all these fancy computers. So I want to make sure, let's see, the I'll be seeing this side of the carburetor. The float bowl and everything's on the back. I know, I know all these terms. I'm an old fart. What can I say? And uh, this will go just like so. So I'll put just a touch of glue on it. And I'll put those two together. And then uh, those will both go in the aluminum. Aluminum box. And it goes just like so. Okay. I see I still have just a little tiny bit of a parting line on there, which I'll have to clean up before I paint. So that's that's part um, BF-13 is the carburetor, BF-24 is the, the plate underneath it. Okay, so those are going to go to the aluminum. The next two parts are BF-17 uh, BF-7, excuse me and BF-11. That's the Ooh, that one almost got away. That's the air cleaner. Okay, it's got a hole in the bottom, so I'll probably be able to just put like a toothpick in there to keep that, uh, you know, while I'm painting it. So let's go ahead and do our white tack. Make it a little point. We'll put that on there. And we'll glue that in. fact is, I'll just... Uh, Use the quick setting. Set that in there just like so. Just a little touch. Not quite centered. Okay, there we go. That's got um, BF7 and BF11. So we'll give that just a quick second. Okay, and that'll go back in the box, and we're going to put that in with the black parts. I'm going to call that all finished for now. It says to mount the transmission to the back, but until I get that painted, I'm not going to do that. So we'll mark this all that it's in paint. My peas are terrible. Okay. I'm not going to do anything more on that for now. Let's move on to 20. Okay. Um, the horn is, is flat on the end. It does not have a recess in it. The instructions here say to drill a hole. That's not easy to do on the end like that and make it tapered. Let me show you what I do here. Give myself a little bit of room here. I use what I what they call a center drill. This is an eighth inch center drill. They're they're meant for you know, working on milling machines and lathes, but the um, got a little plastic on there. 
the end is really tiny and then it you know it, it tapers out to an eighth inch so it's real good for starting holes what what you're supposed to do and, and I'm no machinist so bear with me but when you're when you're drilling a hole and say a piece of steel if you take a you know like a quarter inch drill bit or something the the end is somewhat blunt and you just put it against a piece of metal and it'll, it'll just wander around on you so you're, you take a center drill, which I have a number of sizes of these. This just happens to be an eighth inch. I put that in my pin vise here. And then when you drill, you can see really easy with that little, little point uh, that you're in the center. And then as you go, it gets bigger and bigger until you're out to the size that you want. So it gives you the impression of a, of a horn. Where before it was just, you know, just flat. The fact is that's where the attachment point was. So it wouldn't have looked very good. But anyway, that's how I drill it. I use this little bitty eighth inch uh, center drill. So this is going to be black. It's a uh, BF21. So that's going to go in with the black stuff. The fan is uh, BF-17, and this will be black. Now, this has a small uh, button on the back of it here, which is the attachment point when I glue it on. And I may be able to get a hold of that with a pair of my, my uh, tweezers, just to hold that while I paint it. So I won't wire this if I don't have to, but I can always put just a little piece of wire in and nip it off later where it's not going to be shown. So we're going to put that in with the black. We're getting quite a little pile of black parts. Um, this is a piece of PE that will actually attach to the to the horn, and it'll be painted black. Now see how tiny that thing is. I think I'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, give it give the the uh, See a chance to cure real well before I do my painting. So let me grab that horn back again. And that was in the black. Okay. So here's our horn. And this will attach it's so so tiny this this is a really little bitty piece of photo etch i'll probably have to use a wax pencil to handle it no definitely will these wax pencils are really good for photo etch don't buy wax pencils meant for the hobby industry they're ridiculously expensive and they're no better than the super cheap ones you can buy at the cosmetic counter at your nearest drugstore. Okay, I, I bought a whole bunch of these for next to nothing. And they're very, very long, so you, know, you could just sharpen them up and they'll last forever. But it's really nice for picking up those little bitty pieces of PE when you're gluing them on. So let me get my um, CA set up here. And I want to glue the photo etch on the same side as this wire because I want to put the wire at the bottom so when I cut it off nobody will see it but that's also where this will attach so let's put that aside and I've got my little container here for fee or for um, CA in fact is I still got some in there I wonder if it's still still any good let's just check here I've got some toothpicks. Yeah, it's still liquid. So that'll work fine. So we'll put that there. When you make a little puddle with your CA, it it uh, stays liquidy a whole lot longer than when you just dump it out on a flat surface. 
Let's um, use my another piece of little little bit of wire. In fact, is that needs to be that needs to be cleaned. It got a lot of you know, um, dried dried glue on it. Let's see here. Where is my? Here we go. Try and keep things clean and organized. This is my little PE burner offer. There we go. Nice and clean. Okay. That's about all it takes to get the PE off of there. Er, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to pay attention to what I'm saying. The way to get the CA off, cleaning it up so you can use it again. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to put just a tiny little bit. This stuff's starting to thicken up a little bit, so that will be good. Well, maybe it's still is it liquidy enough? There it is. The fact is, it would probably be better instead of using the. Okay, where did it go here? There it is. The pencil actually rolled away. It might be better off to put the CA on this and then just touch it if I can do it without. This is so tiny. The fact is, if it if it this might not be enough to hold the. Hold the horn in place. I may actually have to to uh, supplement this with a piece of wire. Yeah, it, it's going to have to be done. I'll have to do it this way. Okay, we'll put just a little bit of CA on here. That's too much. Okay, and then we'll try and put it on there like that. And then do a little adjusting before it sets up. Almost there. And I've got the CA on my tweezers. I should be using my um, Teflon coated tweezers keep things from sticking so badly. Okay. I think we're there. Let's turn it just a tiny bit. Okay, that's where it goes. I'm not sure if that's going to hold the horn when it comes to actually mounting it or not. But that's that's all you're going to see. Let's see here if we can get this where you guys can see it. There, There's the PE on there. Still just a tiny little bit crooked. Move it around. Okay. There it is. When that sets up, I'll probably uh, add a little more CA just to uh, reinforce it. But that's how you're supposed to mount the horn. I I can't see that being strong enough to hold the horn in place. But anyway. Um, I'll check it again before I paint it. That'll go back in the little container and we'll put that back in with the black. So I'm going to mark off uh, PE8 as being done. The uh, horn is in paint and the fan is in paint. Let's see here. We're, oh, we're running pretty long. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take another break 
and uh, then we're going to come back and we're going to work on step 21. Okay, guys, be right back. Thanks. Okay, guys, we're back. That works out pretty good. I can stand up and take a little break. Check and see what's going on with my wife. And Anyway, do, do what I need to do. Anyway, um, we're going to go on to step 21. There's a little tray in the back that uh, is, I think, meant to be used for um, uh, storing tools. It's not where the um, spare is stored, but it's 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 uh, a place where you know uh, tire chains or anything else could be stored. It goes under the bed, but on top of the frame. So we'll go ahead and put that together and glue it down because it'll all be the olive green just like the uh, rest. So we've got uh, DB11 is this tray, DB6 and 7 are the sides. So I want to make sure that I put them on the correct sides. Um, I did notice on these that there were slight ejector pin marks. I put a little Mr. Surfacer in the one that might be seen. So I will, you know, uh, before I paint, I'll check and make sure if, you know, if they're visible or not. But this is uh, DB6, which will go on the uh, left side. It just goes on just like so. Just kind of sits in there. It's not, uh, you know, anything difficult. Okay, so let's just put a little glue. I'll go ahead and use the regular since it's a fairly big surface. And it'll go just like so, where it's keyed. It sets up against the shelf on the bottom and on the side, so it's pretty positive just exactly where it goes okay and then the same thing that's db6 this is db7 so it'll be the same thing on the other side it'll go just like so a little regular extra thin And just like so. Okay, nothing to that. There is a little ejector pin on both sides, and I did put some Mr. Surfacer in there. I'm not even sure if you can see it, because the bed will go right over the top, and then the frame in the rear end is, is under it. So I, I'm pretty sure that it'll all be hid. I did just notice that there are some real small ejector pin marks in here. But it's going to be the same way. It's going to go under the bed, and you're going to see about that much of it. So I don't think you need to be concerned about cleaning all those up. Anyway, this will be mounted to the frame. Get it over here. And here's our, here's our frame. The, the frame has, or chassis, four little bumps right here. And it's keyed to four little spaces right there. So it'll go on. Just like so. Nothing to it. Okay, so we'll run a little bit of glue on that. And I don't want to do it on the outside if I can help it, because I do want to leave a... A glue mark I'll have to clean up because that part will probably be fairly visible under the back okay <clears throat> excuse me and then just maybe a tiny bit back here
really be be gentle with this. The more parts you put on, the more fragile it gets. Okay. That is on there. Okay. EF8 is the front bumper. That's right here. Now it has two little brackets here and here that will go to the top and then later on we'll glue some little uh, hooks on there for towing. It also has a little a couple of little uh, protrusions there. You can just barely feel them with your fingernail um, that I am assuming something else will probably be mounted to. But on the inside it has uh, a couple of brackets that will we'll locate it. So it'll go let me just double check here and make sure. Be real careful how you hold it. I want to make sure if the brackets go to the inside or the outside. And they go to the outside, just like so. So we'll put just a little glue here and here. And it goes with those two little bumps up. And it centers on that. And that's all there is to it. Okay, the front bumper is on. We also have a spare tire. It'll be A2 and A5. This I won't attach yet because obviously I want to paint the tire. The majority of the uh, frame will be the olive drab. In the military, basically, they just sprayed everything. So, you know, it's, it's kind of rare to find something that hasn't been, been painted olive drab. But the center of the tire will be olive drab and the uh, outside will be um, rubber black. So let me put this back in the container before I forget. You'd be surprised how many, how much this glue uh, gives off an odor, even a day or two later. I put this in a container, you know, and I know that's how it cures is by evaporation, but you put this in a, con well, anyway. You put it in a container and leave it sealed up for three or four days and you can come back and take it off and it's like, whoa, you know, somebody just spilled a bottle of glue. Anyway, that's safe and secure. Here's the tire. Okay, here's here's a EF10 and, or excuse me, boy, I'm really, got to watch what I'm saying here. That's A2 and A5 going to get everybody confused and it goes just like so now I don't want to glue the outside here because I it's got a lot of detail that I'm afraid I'll mess up so I want to just put some glue around the inside here and when these go together that'll hold it plenty firm so we'll just go around here and uh Sometimes I'll go around a couple times. This this stuff, it's like when you put it on, it starts softening the plastic. And if you go back and do it just a little bit more, it kind of stays there longer. And then you can glue your part on. Okay. I actually did get just a tiny bit of glue on the outside. So I'll have to be real careful not to uh, get my fingers in that. There we go. That's got the tire all together. And that will be, I'll put that in with the um, the um, olive drab. I'll probably paint the outside the, the uh, tire gray, tire, tire, tire black, tire gray, and then I'll mask and paint the center. So that's where that, that'll go. So uh, I don't actually have a container. Well, I have an olive gray, olive drab container. 
So I'll, I'll go ahead and make a, a, a container up for the um, tire black. And that'll go in there. All right, you guys. Um, going to call that good for today. Don't forget, um, these are made in the Ukraine and what's going on over there right now. So um, hopefully, you know, they'll be able to get back to work soon. I did go on the um, uh, Mini Art website a day or two ago. And apparently they still are able to post. And they said on there, there's been a lot of rumors that the factory has been destroyed. And Mini Art themselves came on and said no. The factory's still there and it's still intact and... You know, if they can get into it when this is all over, all they have to do is just do a little cleanup work and they're right back to work. So let's hope that their fortune continues, if you want to call that fortune, and, and the factory will be spared. But uh, I hope everybody's safe, and uh, we'll be back with another episode uh, real soon. Okay, you guys all have a good one. Have a great day, okay? And uh, please like, subscribe, share. I'd like to hit that 100. Thanks a lot. Bye for now, guys.